what she did was she asked me a question. I gave her an answer. And then she asked me the question again. Well, are you gonna are, are you gonna be able to come and do this and do that? So now there's an only one reason why somebody would like so this is where I get I get the I you know I get blasted on or people think that I'm unreasonable. If I tell you I'm gonna do something. And you ask me, can you do something? And I say, yes, I'm going to do it. If you ask me a second time, why would you ask me a second time? The only reason why you ask me again is if you didn't believe me the first time. Yo, what's up, Square Pen Brigade? On this episode, it's just the family, me and Harry kicking it. Um, and we discuss what happens when you tell a lie in a relationship, why you just can't have faith in a relationship, and why the details matter. Yeah, it was a it was a good one. It's an interesting uh, breakdown in, in uh, ace authenticity, credibility, and empathy, and and how that factors in even on the smallest level. Uh, and if you like this type of stuff and you like the uh, game theory that we're breaking down a little bit, if that's what you want to call it, we do a lot more over that at Patreon.com, Patreon.com/slash/Manschool202. That's where you can come and uh, support us because we do weekly episodes of bonus content as well as uh, listener mail and this week's episode uh, Dante and I we do we answer a listener mail question as we talk about uh, how vulnerable Patrice was and also uh, the red pill movement and all the type of shows including fresh and fit and how uh, how we react to them sort of uh, jacking the style of, of black black Philip and beige Philip. So all of that is over patreon.com slash manschool202. Also, if you want relationship consultations, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Uh, Dante, if they want uh, advice from you, how can they get a hold of you? Go to DanteNero.com and click on consult. You can book it right there. So it's important. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, Harry, what's popping with you? Oh, man. I just, I'm just i just trying to live my best life and having a tough time keeping these alligators down. Right. You know. It is difficult, but it gets easier with time. Um, this is going to be one of those shows where it's just you and me kicking it. Um, a lot of stuff on my mind. A lot of things have happened. A lot of things have happened with you. Okay. I yeah. just wanted to kind of give because I feel like what we do here is um, is unique in the fact that my own personal life and your personal life we kind of evolve sure. with time and these yeah, things are evolving. And and uh, well, first and foremost, I want to um, I want to shout out the uh, the new Patreon members that signed up to support us. Thank you. Reason why the Patreon is that anybody wants to support us and keep this podcast going, I really would appreciate it. Um, sign up at www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Um, we have a couple of tiers where you can check us out. Um, and, uh, you know, it's sort of like when we talk about this, this this journey of finding your true happiness and we uh, espouse the principles ace authenticity credibility and empathy part of the credit part of the credit credibility part is if you're listening to us and you're saying man you guys really helped me out then the righteous incredible thing was would be to support this so that we can keep going so um i really want to give a straight shout out to the new patreon members which is Brandon White, um, Connor Flores, Joshua Stargell, uh, Michael. Um, you just put Michael, so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm shouting out. But thank you so much for supporting us, man. You don't know how much this means to us. Um, this is how we keep doing it. It's how this is what keeps us going. When a lot of times when I'm tired, uh, you know, um, We're not feeling I, well, like today, like today, you are yeah. in fact not feeling well. Not feeling well, but we got to we got to uh, march on, and that's yeah. something I definitely want to talk about in the, in the midst of this. And Harry, I wanted you, you to kind of expose on some of the things that you, shit that you've been going on and how you things that you've learned because I've I've learned a lot. Um, uh, the um, but I wanted to first take the time out to shout out all the um. All of the all of the guys who the new Patreon followers, the new people joining us over at Patreon, where and the where, old ones and the old, and the old ones, ones too. Like where Tina, Twenty Jackson and Ali and 
you know, I mean, I just want to say I really appreciate y'all sticking with us, man, so we can get this. I'm still working on, I'm actually in the process of selling my house and moving someplace else. And so the studios, we've been doing the studio kind of mobile on the run. And, mm. uh, you know, at least until I get everything set up, we I, I definitely want to stream so you guys can call in and talk to us regularly. Just right, like, you know, like we could literally do it online and then just post it. Um so yeah, it's an interesting thing. Uh, so many principles that we have espoused on and throughout the years, and things that we've come up with that you know kind of don't seem relevant in the first place. And a lot of times, when I look at uh, all the platforms that are out in this manosphere, including and not excluding uh kevin samuels god rest you know rest our lord and savior is kevin samuels <laughs> no name about um, that name. but but uh you know i mean people would probably put patrice's name under there and above that name i would think um <laughs> well even I mean, though, listen, uh, that, that then now you're talking about a different sect of religion entirely now you're talking about judaism versus christianity mm-hmm. yeah well i mean to me it's all the same the, uh, you know, the um, old testament versus think- the new testament who do you think the first think, person ever, Dante, if you're thinking about it, who's the first ever person ever to push back, you think, and change the the perspective of the game? Well, I think the first thing was when we saw when we saw um Pimps Up Holes Down, when we were watching, you know, the exploitation and the manipulation of women in that way when uh, Pimps Up Holes Down and the other uh What is Pimps Up Holes Down for people who don't know? Who um, aren't familiar with that? It it was uh it was a movie about the whole pimp game. A and documentary. It was a documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, HBO did it years ago. I think the what was the the other one it was not American Gangster. It was American Pimp. American Pimp. Good friend of mine, um, who was actually one of the feature parties on that, which was uh, Rosebud. Rosebud. Rosebud with the double D for the double dose of pimp in him. And what's interesting about is when you when you talk about that stuff people get all etchy and 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 scandalous about it because of the fact that we're uncomfortable talking about it but but i think that's also in a way where we have moved away from uh where we've moved away from the idea of looking at things in its entirety and not looking at things uh in terms of there's something like you, you know, people, people have no problem saying um, you can learn something from anybody. Um, and then when you expose somebody who's less than moral, right. You think to yourself, Oh, wow. Um, you, 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 Oh, somehow, somehow that doesn't apply. Um, that doesn't apply because of the fact that it, these people are immoral or, or we perceive them as being immoral. But one of the things I think we really have to understand is that, uh, you know, human beings are always going to be imperfect. And um, uh, it, as long as people are going to be imperfect, uh, um, there's two things that are going to happen. Um, we, we're going to have to give forgiveness and get forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness. That's just part of the human, the human condition. I mean, because we all make mistakes, and even when we're not making mistakes on purpose, um, I think we yeah. make mistakes. You know, those mistakes still happen. Good. You were gonna say something? Yeah, you may not. You know, it could be a situation where you're not. Uh, you know, even even the best of intentions. I always like that phrase. The the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm. Because even when you have good intentions and things go bad, it's still. They still have consequences, right? You know, right, right. And then, uh, uh, I mean, if anybody, I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a living proof of that. So, um, so I, that's something I was thinking about, and I think about how how uh, people are so diff they, they regard words and meaning um, so often that words words in the lexicon of language. Words mean things, and even though to a certain extent, you know, words can change what their meaning is, but I don't think we're talking about, we're talking about just basic communication. Um, so it's, what's interesting is in the, 
you know, when you talk about pimps up, pumps down, pimp, pimp, pimps up, hose down, or American pimp, or any of those, you know, you talk to these guys, Pimp and Ken, or what are you, all these goos oh, were. One Pimp and Ken things. was his name? His name was Pimp and Ken? Pimp and Ken was one of them, yeah. That's, yeah. He could have been a little more creative. You know, I feel I, Pimp I like and it. Ken is I'm like. I'm for it. It's right in your face. I know, but I mean, you could be anything. This guy is like, you know, you know, Batman, Superman, Pimp and Ken. He you was know, like, just, my name is Ken. That's like one of the guys like DJ Frank. You're like, come on, bro. Out of all the names you could have picked, you could have well, picked the alter ego in life. How is Master G, Master C? Ma- I mean, as long as you get it, you're the first one in it. I, I, I guess, man. But, you know, I don't know. That's like, I remember there was this like Armenian DJ. His name was like, had some Armenian wedding. His name was like DJ Hagop. Hagop. Or whatever. He's like, it's such an Armenian thing to do. Like, uh, my name is Hagop. I'm the DJ, DJ Hagop. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I mean, let's let's not forget Curtis Blow, and you know I how he Curtis got that Blow. Name. So, oh, is that? Well, how did Curtis Blow get his name? I don't know this. I don't oh. know. I'm assuming it's because he did blow, you know. <laughs> but oh um, man, now I want to know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, the breaks, guys. Um, allegedly, allegedly. Um. So, uh, one of the things I want to talk about. I was in the um. We we were in the city work in Brooklyn. We actually in Brooklyn working at a club. And excuse me, guys, I don't really feel great, but the show must go go on. Um, had this young kid, young mixed race kid, and I was hanging out with uh, one of our one of the f- friends of comedy, Chuck Hudson. He um, he he uh, has the thing. He was wearing a crystal. He was wearing a crystal and gold fronts. Which is some a bit of a contradiction in terms of his attire. So he's wearing like spiritual crystals and gold fronts, which um, maybe don't match the most. You know what I mean? Like you, you see somebody's wearing crystals; they usually got hemp pants on or something. But right, it's it, it, crystals usually go towards a more uh, naturalistic, spiritual, and less uh, financial sort of lifestyle, less indulgent lifestyle. Yeah. But uh, Truck was somehow choosing to embrace both, both the spiritual side and then the, the streets. Yeah, and, and what's funny about that is that there's a, again, it's something that we talk about women, that women find, um, you know, the, the, wow, is that, what are you typing with a hammer? <laughs> sorry, bud, I'm sorry. I never learned how to, I never learned how to type properly. Like, I never took a typing class. So the yeah. way I type is like, like yeah pecking away at it not like the not like the fingers or whatever so yeah i've been, I've many people have complained about my typing sorry and uh, just to break the fourth wall i i'm the one who does all the information so i try to keep all this write all this shit down right right right, show, right, right. But i guess it was too loud it was like dunk, 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 dunk. it was especially loud shit this is a good microphone though so there's the yeah. plus side that's the positive um so uh What's interesting too is is this kid was talking about, oh man, I think it's cool that you have uh you have um a uh what do you call it? Uh, uh you, you know, it's crystals and it's cool and you know, you have to manifest and and this and you you know, you have to man so this is a real hokey kind of thing that women came up with. Oh, how, how's my mic sound? Your mic's yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, you sound loud to me, you sound loud and clear. Okay. Um, but this manifest, I manifest this, I manifest it. Like, look, I, you know, whatever gets you to where you got to go. But I, I don't know if were you there for the, for the re- I was there for the, the, t- yeah, no, I was there not for the beginning, but for the ball breaking about the manifesting. And then the conversation was more about, you need to find the motivation. And then your argument was, you don't need motivation. You right. need discipline. The, the world doesn't give a fuck about your motivation. The outcome doesn't give a fuck about your motivation. It gives a fuck about the work that gets accomplished. So you don't have to be motivated to get the work done. It doesn't matter as long as you do the work, as uh, long as you stay consistent, which is interesting because it is true. It doesn't matter. Uh, the end result doesn't give a shit about the motivation. Some people feel like you need that motivation, but your your thing is the consistency of it. And if you're consistent, whether because, I mean, that's, I find that with working out, um, I hate working out. I've never, as as long as I've been working out and trying to lose weight, I've never enjoyed it. Even the best case scenario, I'm able to distract myself on an elliptical and that's it. I hate it. 
mm-hmm. the results have come from every day that I hate it still going in and doing it. Right. And and not being comfortable and not enjoying. I'd rather do anything else than work out. I hate it. I feel like it's a waste of time except for the results. Right. But at the end, the 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 calories don't give a shit about my motivation. They only give a shit about the work that gets put in, the results that yeah. get put in. Yeah, because nothing else works. Le- I wanted to do this too, since it's just you and me. Sure. How do you perceive my ability to communicate these points? When you're standing on the background, standing on the sideline, and you're um, listening to me pretty much ream somebody, which, I, to be honest, my intention is not to ream them. My intention is to educate. And then, sure, yeah. And I think a lot of times I get disgusted with the lack of logic and sound consideration. Well, you don't like people pontificating with things that don't necessarily make sense. And sometimes there is some a part of me always goes, you know, you're you're getting caught in the nuance of something, but it's never like the point is wrong. I get what you're saying. To me now I enjoy it a little more cuz it's fun to watch people be a little uncomfortable because mm-hmm. you dig in deep and you don't you don't let go. You know, I think I and other t- people have a tendency to go fair enough, but you go past the line of fair enough. You go no. No, what you're saying is inaccurate. Um, but th- the message is always sound, so it never bothers me. The message is always, it makes sense. So uh, that Saturday, I think you were talking, it was me, you, Keith Robinson, Graham K, and Truck, and uh, I forget, there was someone else there. I don't recall uh, who else might have been there. Um, oh, the bounce of Dutch. The bounce, yeah, d- uh, Dutch, yeah. So the conversation was you know keith going no you do need motivation motivation matters and your point is technically it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter and you go in to go this is what you need for the results right right and so it's that one's an easier one but there's times where you go hard in on somebody and it's is it a little uncomfortable sometimes but for me it's I, I kind of enjoy watching the squirm and watching you try to set people straight because there are a lot of people who talk a lot of bullshit yeah. and they have these life philosophies that are great on paper, but what does it mean in the real world? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I actually got I got a couple of messages from uh, when we had E-Man on. And- oh, you did go heavy on E-Man because E-Man was very, uh, started going a little religious or thanking God and you were, I think you were upset that he was thanking God a little more than he was, or including God on the same level as you and you did all the work. Yeah, because I didn't, you know, I, you know, everybody knows I'm I'm an atheist and if you're offended by that, then don't listen. Um, but the bottom line is um, I cannot see you, when we're talking about logic, um, I, 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 let me look up, I'm going to look up faith real quick the the question of faith uh or the definition of faith what faith is yeah yeah i think if i recall it's the the belief in something with the absence of proof right right without the absence of proof right no with it in the absence of proof in the absence in the absence of proof right why can't i say proof 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 yeah but you went heavy on e-man because he was uh you, he was subscribing to your all your teaching and all your philosophy and giving you praise and then started drifting a little into religious parts, which is the antithesis of what you discussed because it's not based in any logic. It's purely based in faith. Right, and right. That, and that irked you, and you did not let uh, – you, you went in heavy on E-Man. Right. Hold on one sec. Hmm. Uh, I need an espresso. Fading fast. Um, That's all right. You could drink a cappuccino on camera. What are you afraid? What are you ashamed of drinking the cap the cappuccino on camera? It ain't like you're doing a line of blow, Dante. And even then, it's even the then, internet. Right? It's even internet. then, we got congressmen who are uh, sex traffickers. They're still, you know, hey, what are why they, not? What are they gonna get you for? Little expert, uh, little little coffee beans, blood 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 diamond coffee beans. You <laughs> know. So, you Which should gr- funny, you should you know, just snort the coffee grinds. Honestly, at this you know point. coffee grinds are just a little off date. Coffee grinds are really a, a really huge market, and they actually have like indentured service picking coffee beans. They got coffee cartels and stuff. Oh man, yeah, I mean, anything think about we how enjoy. Much, think about how much people, how much, how many people drink coffee. 
I mean, I mean, Starbucks is where how many is how many million dollars, billion dollars? Look that up too. I feel like looking up everything from now on. <laughs> um, Starbucks net worth is worth what kind of company is that? Well, it's a publicly traded company, I do believe. It's worth one hundred twenty-four billion dollars. So one hundred twenty—that's billion. That's coffee, coffee beans. You know. They're not making that on the scones, mm. you know. They're not just making. Anytime that money. there's some money to be made, it gets it starts to get dirty. Oh yeah, so you it have, starts yeah. to get dirty. I remember there was a Jean Claude Van Damme movie where it was like there's like gangsters and stuff, and it turned out like what they were all stealing, what all the murder was about was denim, like denim blue jeans. Yeah, exactly. if I remember, yeah, which is true. Like at some point, if there, yeah, if there's money to be made, there's some dirty shit going down. Yeah. Um. Anyway, your point with uh, somebody so hit I you often, up about email. I often, in retrospect, I often look at you. Mm. I, I think about, I wonder what Harry thinks about the way that I'm handling this and how, uh, you know, like, uh, so, so for instance, uh, the thing with E-Man, I'm, I'm yeah. going to just make this clear. The thing sure. with E-Man is E-Man has a tendency to do the right thing and then his uh, his default which most of the guys who call me have this default and they have because they've created these patterns of where they're comfortable whatever whatever their their nonsense is right mm. and it becomes this kind of thing where because they're comfortable with their nonsense they espouse those 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 kind of myths and then it gives them a way out now look if you're religious and you believe in religion i have no problem with that as long as it doesn't as long as it doesn't start to collide with any level of logic, which I also can't. Well, that's, that's, that's tough, though, because it's, it's It eventually it's, will. It eventually will, because the whole basis of it is in absence of evidence. Right. In absence of any proof. Any practical proof, practical yeah. evidence. And, and you know, Harry, I watched endless debates where sure. atheists battle religious people and they... And nobody is coming up with no, I mean, there's, there's remnants of, there's a, what's funny now is because the world is such that you can Google anything. So when people try to prove the existence of God, what they do now, because people are smarter, is they try to prove God on a level of ex, ex, uh, existential philo philosophical points. In terms of, and they, I don't want to go too deep in this because this goes really deep, but they talk about uh, basically logical uh, lar logical paradigms and art and in and, and terms of those elements of how you create a logical argument and, and which justifies probability. Um, a little complicated. I'm, I'm a little gonna, lost on that one. I'm not going to lie. So... The way you see, whenever you see a, an atheist, atheist to God debate, the existence of God, it used to be like, this is, this is the truth. Why is this the truth? Because the Bible says so. And then the question is, well, you can't prove the Bible by the Bible. And, and if the Bible you is- You can't innate, cite the Bible as proof that the Bible yeah, you exists. you have to have sure, outside yeah. proof or cross-references and so on and so forth. So what they don't do that anymore. What they do is they create a- a uh, logical argument for probability. And it, it goes something like, um, do we have, uh, there's a lot of things like, for instance, love. Love, we don't have proof of love. It's a feeling. It's a, it's a feeling. And because there's no proof of love, there's no physical proof of love. Um, there might be an explanation of it. We might look at it as sacrifice, but it's something, it's kind of a, a, a concept of that needs to be proven and that you can prove it logically based on uh, behavior that doesn't necessarily, is not a, a proof. Like, for instance, if you go the theory of gravity, you say, this is what happens. This is why. It happens. I drop a ball and the ball falls. So it's very simple. There's a proof and repeatable proof that you can do all over and over and over again. So what they do is these existential gar arguments about the probability of having a God based on the fact that there's uh, 
there's so many people that believe it, that there's so many cultures that expound upon it. And, but that, and even if that is true, the, the, then the question is, which is always asked is which God is right. Is it the Judaic God? Is the Islamic God? Is it which, which, which manifestation, but that's neither here nor there. My, my point being, we can all agree. It's not the Mormons, right? We all agree uh, that it's not the Mormons. Well, it, I, it, it's not any worse. The, the models are not any no, worse not. than anybody else. It's not. Anyway, so somebody mentioned E Man, the episode so they, we did with E Man Morgan really a couple weeks ago. I ripped on him, and I ripped on him. And, and one of the reasons I ripped on him, not really whip, ripped on him, but I held his feet to the fire, was because he constantly has an ins uh, 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 he has a consistency problem. And in my mind, I think a lot of people, have, most people, have a consistency problem in certain areas. But you don't, you don't. Um, achieve the trust without doing it all the time or at least making the attempt hmm. and if you have a if you circumvent any of the principles it lines yeah. up to bite you in the ass yeah um, i know that from personal experience that it has um i, I did shout out the patreons right you did you okay. did wow you really are yeah you're I'm struggling out. today yeah you did that for about a couple minutes there Jeez, okay man. Thank you for so, toughing it out, by the way. So if everyone's yeah, yeah, like, yeah. why is Dante a little low energy today? Why is he why is he a little gravelly? He's not feeling well, but he I I gave him an out too. I said, We don't have to do this today. And Dante said, No. We owe it to the listeners. These people, I live and die for them. And if I die on air, that's how I want to go out, he said. I said, yeah. That seems like a bit much. And he said I take a lot of flu medication. So Yeah, you know. I got a little gout in my foot. <laughs> I, I, I'm a, I'm really jacked up right now jesus gout you yeah. got you got rickets next you got like a lot of pirates well, uh pirate, I, you know uh, I, i've been eating a lot of lobster a lot of uh i had a tomahawk steak i had a porter por house I've, I've been uh what else did I so have? this is a rich person's disease what is this yeah it is kind of a rich person's disease it's this rich a... rich foods that that have the buric acid build up in your joints it's, it's so really you gonna... and elon musk and ted dibiase the million dollar oh, man all, got, all they all got all the gotten gout. the gout <laughs> they got it in their whole body they're riddled with gout so if my point with this is if you lie about anything yeah you may not lie about everything but it gives space to um for you to lie about something else Sure. Like once you cross that line, and even even uh, even little white lies, you know, because we all do that. But you know, for example, I I went through a thing with my girl, my relationship that was really like that I didn't realize in hindsight. How and I want to say before you tell this story, yeah, you really didn't understand, and the reason why it, I know you yeah. really didn't understand what the dynamics was was because you called me afterwards after we had resolved it hmm. you called yeah. me and said man i don't i i don't i feel like i did the right thing and so yeah. even when the intentions are pure you could still make the you, you could still have a blind spot and i think sometimes the blind spot is the fact that your intention was never mean yeah so yeah. I'll tell the story. I'm gonna some details I'll leave out because my girl is a private citizen and she didn't sign up necessarily to have it all out there. But I'll, I'll tell you this: I initially, when we met, I was living with somebody else, with a with a female roommate and a, and two other people. Uh, no, I mean two people total. And I didn't mention to her that that roommate and I used to go out. Now, you know, I didn't expect our me and my girl to turn into the thing that it turned into, and. Uh, so I didn't, I just like, all right, I don't know. I won't even, I'll tell her when the time is right. And I did eventually tell her, but by not giving that information up front, it, when she found out she was upset about it because I hadn't mentioned that up front to her. I wasn't open and honest and she was sidelined by that. In my head, I was like, listen, I told, uh, but I told you the information. I thought we we're good. We talked about it. And what you don't realize is that. And then on top of another thing, I didn't mention we were married. Because she was so pissed. And this, again, was five years ago, five, six years ago. And it's not the way I would handle it now. But I was still growing at the time, right? And so I felt like, listen, she's pissed off. I'm going to wait until we're in a better place to, to let her know that we were married. That me and the, the roommate were married. Now, we got married for health insurance. Again, so these are all caveats. It was not out of love. It was out of 
a need for health insurance. There was no real wedding ceremony. We got it basically was done on paper. I thought, you know, reveal, not revealing that information. Now, wait, let me just back up a little bit. Yeah. So when you had the conversation about getting married, getting married was solely about health care. Solely like, about health care. Yeah. So you were just like, I need you. Well, we could get married and you could this way you can get on my yeah. health care. As a performer and, and an artiste, right. uh, because America is the greatest country in the world, by the way, we don't all have uh, health care. USA number you one. You got to say sarcasm. After uh, I say well, I hope so. they could pick it up. If you can't right, pick so. up that I'm being sarcastic. But no, I think it's wonderful that our, our elderly. I think it's great that my grandfather had $100 reduced from his food stamps. It's great. We fixed it, guys. We got yeah. it. Uh, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk can go into space, but my grandfather, he's the real problem. Yeah. Um, I think it's wonderful, all those things. Anyway, my point is this. I didn't have health insurance, and it be- was starting to become a problem. And the, the person I was dating at the time, she said, well, we can get married, you know, and, and you could use my health insurance because she had a, a regular day job. So we did that. You know, we got all that taken care of. I had, you know, gotten a prenup and all that stuff as well and all that. So it wasn't a problem. Now, we eventually broke up, but we we remained friendly for the time being, and we had stayed living together. Um, and we had moved on and to our separate lives. also didn't really see the point of getting a divorce immediately or whatever, whatever. It wasn't because urgent. Y'all, yeah, it wasn't also, urgent. Also, y'all were still friends, and you were still on her health care. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it, we were still friends, and it was still on her health care, and then... There was a time she was on my health care. I reciprocated it when I did have a, a regular gig and all that back and forth. Anyway, so in my head, hey, this is not love. It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. But the problem is these little white lies in my head are not being forthcoming at first creates a lot of doubt in the relationship. I was not honest. So if I'm lying about that, no matter how good my intentions are, what else am I lying about? Right. And to me, I don't view myself as a liar because if it was really important, I wouldn't lie about it. If it was right. really something that that affected. But your partner doesn't look at it that way. And right. rightfully so, she doesn't look at it that way. And, and the other thing is I think you have to have the empathy. You have the, em- have the empathy to sit in somebody else's shoes and see what perspective that is. Now, there's a few elements of... Uh, I mean, she literally flew, quit her job and flew across the country and relocated here sure. to be, be with, with me, which yeah. is which is pretty dope, considering how how much she thought that you were important enough to do that. Yeah, um, without a doubt. So now the thing have, is, I thought I had the empathy for that. The problem was that I didn't empathize enough with how much the other the other information affected her. Well, it's also it's also like, you know, and, and one of the things that we talked about is, can you imagine you have uh, a mother and sisters and family and, and all of a sudden you tell them you're going, you're moving across the country for some guy that they haven't even met yet, you know, and and then they're saying, well, are you sure, you know, every day you're getting the doubting, De- doubting Debbie's going, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you this really is crazy? Want it? Wow. That's crazy. You know, yeah. like, I mean, yeah, you want to make sure maybe you should this and me and she's going, no, no, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, he showed me who he is. I realized yeah, yeah. who he is and da, 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 da. So she packs all her stuff, quits her job and comes all the way across the country. She has no friends here, nobody here. And then she's her sole situation is you. You're, you're yeah. basically her, you know, you give you you you're her only social connection. Now she was able to find a job here, um, but you also we're not also taking into consideration somebody who does that and the kind of pressure if the if they're if they're even capable emotionally to be in that situation and not not panic about it because if it doesn't work, you know you're showing back you're showing back out at your mom's house. With two duffel bags full of clothes, like, and they're looking at you like, we told you, we told you so. Yeah, feeling feeling ridiculous. And even if those people didn't say that, which nobody really, you feel family, ridiculous. You feel ridiculous because not like her family didn't support. I met the family; they're very sweet, they're wonderful, and all that, and they like me and all that stuff. But anyway, the the point the point of the matter is this: it manifested just even though I was honest with telling her because I didn't tell her up front. 
that still made me a liar. In my head, I was like, well, I told her. I didn't keep it from her. I eventually told her all that voluntarily. That still made me a liar. And right. it took me a little bit to understand. And you did do it voluntarily. I but, did do it voluntarily. It and it was always my intention to do it voluntar- voluntarily. Yeah. However, living in that thing, when that person finds that out, they re- they have been living under a lie the whole time. And in my even head, if, it, even if you tell them intentionally, now, yeah. if you had told them, so the minute you told them, like, first, this was my roommate, then it was my ex girl, then it was somebody that I dated, and then it was somebody who I married. Like, and you kind of, there was a drip, drip, drip of information that even though you revealed what the true picture was, even though it emotionally didn't, you didn't see it that way because you were already emotionally detached. She's now picture somebody whose parents were like, well, you sure you want to do this? And then you get there and then every step of the way, even though you're volunteering the information, she's going, why is the story keep changing? Right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Which, and even, and it's funny because even if it doesn't technically impact what's going on, it's the, mm-hmm. the person feels, well, if I can't, if this isn't clear to me, then what else isn't clear to me? Which right, which is and true then that because, leads to because la- a lack you of trust. Were really, I really felt like you you were really great to her. I mean, you put time in and yeah. Valentine's Day crimps from it, between work and everything, and you would a lot of times we wouldn't even be able to talk because you were doing something with her or including her and stuff. So you're also really a good guy, which to a certain extent makes it even more difficult because it comes so much more confusing. Is because oh, here's this person who, in her mind, this is this person who's being deceitful. And then the and but your actions are saying, you know, your actions are wow, he's so loving and he's so kind. And so then it becomes which is I, I, I revert back to a friend of mine, a friend of mine who got molested by her father uh from the time that she was like 11, 12 years old, right? But mm-hmm. she had a great relationship with her father. Like her father taught her how to fix cars and taught her to play baseball with her, softball with her, took her to take on a job. And he really put a lot of times on paper. He seemed like he was a, a, a great dad until he was coming in the room at, you know, two o'clock in the morning fucking with his daughter, you know? So now you have this woman who who is dealing with this trauma who, for the most part, hasn't has to reconcile the, the fact that she loves the guy who has abused her, right? So when she got married to my boy, there was nothing he could have done that would have made it okay. So it didn't matter if he wasn't cheating. It didn't matter if he was up front. didn't matter if he was transparent. Anything that she found out outside of him volunteering, it was always, even if she didn't find something, if she would just make assumptions about something that was going, which he was, guy was a serial monogamous, right? Raised kids, hard work, the whole nine yards, great dad, great provider. But his wife was carrying this burden. And then she wasn't, you know, because you don't, I always say, you don't really mind that a woman lays those burdens on you as long as she's not laying them on you with the, with a vindictiveness of like, oh, I'm going to pay you back for something that somebody else said to me you know like it's there's a sincere kind of i i I need your help i mean there's nothing we like better than that than to be with a woman that makes you feel wanted and that you can help her and really solve but she she just wouldn't she wouldn't go to therapy she went to therapy for a short period of time and she wouldn't uh she wouldn't uh acknowledge the fact that this it was like oh i've dealt with this oh you really you've dealt with with rapes that went on from age 11 to age 17 you know so and then she has so much good times with the father that it was like a connection. It was so I'm I'm not saying that your situation is that serious serious, but no, it's no. Serious. But it's yeah. like wow, he's such a great guy, and he's so attentive and such an attention to detail. The fact that he doesn't see this makes him makes him me question his credibility. Sure, because yeah. how could he be as good as he is to me? And then what happens is. Other outside factors start to affect that person's behavior, you know, for, for her, you know, or, you know, yeah, for her coming to a different place is difficult time. Sure. And so when someone experiences no friends, a difficult no time, yeah, 
which is true for anybody, you know. So yeah. when you're experiencing a difficult time and then you have, you know, that weakens you a little bit. It makes it life hard. And then it's on also, top of that, you you feel like a lack of trust. So the point is that these, what I think was a little white lie, snowballs into something bigger. And it always does. It always does snowball. And you just don't realize it up front that it turns even into if something. Your intent, yeah. Even if your intentions are good. Even if your intentions are kind, it's still it, you're still a liar because of what is a what is a liar is a person who lies. So any lie, even when it's to preserve her, her, I guess emotional safety or whatever, you still you. I mean, you, you got to learn to tactfully say it. But what's painful is going to be painful. It's you know I think the intent is what makes it not painful or painful or not painful enough. Um, or or too painful, you know, depending on how you my scope is. And so getting back to E-Man, it's like, the, so my point is the consistency of telling the truth all the time from the beginning, from now, if there's something that you forgot, you can't deal with something you forgot. But if, if everything else is righteous, you can say, I listen, it just slipped my mind and I forgot. And they'll believe you. Why? Because you're so on the point anyway. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you're on the point and you're you're righteous and you're lying about something or cheating or something like that, there's such a contradiction. It's like you can't believe any of it. You can't even believe the good stuff is what happens. And so with E-Man, it's like you, as soon as you start referring to and, – and, 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 and I'll tell you, in, Af in a lot of African religions – the the thing is, first of all, there's no separation of masculinity and femininity. I mean, in 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 I mean, there is a separation in African religions, but there's a balance in that. Whereas in a lot of European religions, biblical religions, there is a clear, unevil, uneven separation of the females and the males, as if the females don't matter, and. Also, there's a situation where there's this need to be perceived as Christian, like Christ-like, or or noble in that way. So now you're doing fucked up shit, but you really want to act like you're noble because that's the agency is over you and is able to to say you need to be this way. And heavy faith, blind heavy faith, does not get you there. In fact, it will make sure that you don't get there because the, the, by design, that's what it's supposed to do. You just you have no real direction. So, you know, I always think about that. But um, anyway, getting back to this guy, he goes, you know, I'm more spiritual than religious. And so I go, what does that mean? Because this is the guy at the comedy club yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about. We're, we're having the discussion. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is who was wearing the spiritual items, but had no. Well, he truck was wearing the the, the, the spiritual crystals, items and, and some guy who was there was like, "Oh, I think it's cool. I mean, I'm a more spiritual person than religious person, and I'm and I'm I'm. Well, what does that mean? Like you you throw. What does that mean? I mean, we kind of understand. If I say I'm more spiritual than religious. You get a perception of that, but you don't specifically know what I mean because he's taking these two words to putting them together and then he's defining them. Now, if I meet up with the guy and ask him, what did you mean? And, and if he's an honest person, what he'll do is tell you what his thinking is. But most of the time, people's personality is contributed by, contributed by and given um, credence based on what somebody else has told us, what we believe, the way we believe, who raised us, when the reality is that none of this is okay, that the honest seeking of truth has to be a, an ongoing, has to be an ongoing pursuit. So anyway, the guy goes, oh, I'm spiritual. What does that mean? Well, it's just I don't subscribe to religious dogma. Well, honestly, very few, very few people too do. You know, everybody kind of cherry picks their religion to what they whatever makes them most comfortable, and then they move on from that. You know, um, it's a weird kind of concept. But when you ask them to explain these concepts, they don't know they they don't know what to say. 
Same thing is tr true in relationships. It's the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. Because I, I'm realizing this more and more. And then what's interesting is, Harry, I know you realize it as well. Like, like this was a real milestone for you. I mean, I mean, I don't know if you. Yeah, I, I mean, it. It also it showed me a, a level of clarity of like even how even something, even the minutia is important. Even yeah. the even the details, the small details that you think are not a big deal, are important. It's a shortcut. It was a shortcut to a degree. And again, it's which not is some, also something yeah. that I say all the time. And a lot of times, people people get mad. People get mad at me because um, because they think that I'm getting caught up in the weeds. The, and I'm not getting caught in the weeds. What I'm saying is the words matter, the detail, the presence matter, knowing what you're saying and how you're saying it, how are people are perceiving it. It's like when I think, when I see like Jordan Peterson, when I talk about Jordan Peterson being a dirtbag and a piece of garbage, because he's an intelligent guy who creates concepts and words and puts them together so that you can't really define, you know, uh, he, if he goes uh, low level physical content the presence of low level you can kind of figure that out but you got to ask him what it is and and one of the things that i try to do on this podcast all the time is i try to explain basic fundamental in, in a basic fundamental way so you can get it because i want you to understand it because i believe that the concepts will help you if you do understand it so the guy was like so what does that mean well, you know, you should really read The Secret. I've read The Secret. I'm 56 years old. I read The Secret. I read Alan Watts. I've read uh, uh, Nietzsche, Nietzsche. Nietzsche, I forget how to. I've read philosophers. I've read people who expound logic, Freud, Carl Jung, psychological, neurolinguistic. You name it, I read it. African spiritualism, Asian spiritualism, alchemy, Wiccan. I've been down all those roads. And what I realize, the reason why we talk about the three principles is because they work with everything. Harry will say, say to me, even when we were going through this trauma, um, when he was going through this trauma with him and this girl, um, based on what he had said to me and what way she was acting, I made a certain inference. And then... Um, when she was like, I, you don't know the whole story. Mm. Yeah. And I said, tell me what you think I need to know. And then she explained what her point of her position was. In this Even though thing. I presented you the same information, the notion of when I presented to her and was I different. And I, I don't want you to say, I want you to understand it, Harry. I did not think that you were being deceptive at all. Cause I no, don't know. Not, a, not at all. Need, and I, my I, intention wasn't to be deceptive because in my head, I, I'm, I've told her I volunteered all that information, but I didn't do it up front. Right. Right. I and, thought, all right, well I volunteered it, you know, and I had reasons because I, I wanted it to be a, you know, a, in a good situation. I wanted to wait until it was a good opportunity. And, like to give uh, bad news. And the thing is when, when I yeah. jumped the gun and somebody says something and I checked them immediately, because it's the same reason why I say you can't let some the same way you you were looking for the right time to say things is the same thing when some when a, when, a, when a woman is being disrespectful and you're not checking her immediately 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 what you're saying is that this behavior is okay and if the longer you wait to check her let's think about the dynamic of what you what you're saying you're saying that the okay, I she's done something that's dis, disrespectful, or she's done something that is um, how should I put it, passive aggressive, or, or or aggressive aggressive, or any any number of things between that. Yeah. And me not checking it is I'm saying this behavior is acceptable. Now when I stop her from being disrespectful because it's becoming overbearing. Yeah, I said don't do this. But the 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 uh the disconnect is that I've allowed it up to this point so she could just as well interpret it as I can do this but I only can't go this far. 
Like the boundary is here. The boundary is when he told me to stop it or I'll leave. But prior to that, it's fine. Everything beneath that, anything that's less than that is fine. So if I call you a liar, it will break us up. But if I say you're deceptive, it that won't break you break you. Sometimes I think you're so deceptive. I've had a I've had a woman say to me, she didn't even accuse me. What she did was she asked me a question. I gave her an answer. And then she asked me the question again. Well, are you going to are, are you going to be able to come and do this and do that? So now there's an only one reason why somebody would like. So this is where I get I get the I, you know, I get blasted on or people think that I'm unreasonable. If I tell you I'm going to do something. And you ask me, can you do something? And I say, yes, I'm going to do it. If you ask me a second time, why would you ask me a second time? The only reason why you ask me again is if you didn't believe me the first time. It's like this. It's like a light switch. If I turn, if you say, could you turn the light on? And I turn the light switch on. And then you say, hey, could you turn the light on? And the light is still shining. I go, what are you talking about? The light's on. Well, I just want you to turn it on again. Wait, you want me to turn it off and then turn it on because I, you, I, the, the light can't be more on than already than it already is. And when when you ask, when you tell somebody, and you when somebody trusts you and they give you their word, what happened? Sorry, man, I had something popped oh. up on my phone. Apologies. The uh, when you when you say I'm going to do that, if she doesn't respect the fact that you 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 told her what you were going to do and you haven't even had a yeah. chance to disappoint her. What she's saying is, I don't trust you. Yeah. So you, yeah. you can't let that go. So right. even when, if you, she asks you, are you going to be able to do such and such? Yes, I will. When she asks again, you should be on that neck. Because you should be saying, did I not tell you I would? Yeah, yeah, I was just making sure. What You don't need to make sure. I gave you my word. My word is bereft of honor, meaning it's, it's, it, it's not questionable. So if you're asking me a second or a third time about the same thing, right, you don't, I have to assume that you don't trust my word. And if we have a situation where you don't trust my word, that's how it gets, that's like, like imagine if instead of asking you a second time for the same question, if I go, hey, because this is what she's saying, I really don't really believe you. You're really not that trustworthy. So I just want to check back with you again to make sure that you said you're going to do what you're going to do. Because if you didn't, if, you, if you're not, I want to make a contingency plan. If somebody said that to you, I don't trust you. And I don't think that what in those you're, words that you if they just said that, what which is what the question infers. I don't trust you. I don't know if I'll ever trust you. So I'm always going to check up on you. No matter what you tell me, whatever you tell me I'm, you're going to do or not, I don't really believe you until I see it. You can see how problematic that is. Yes. But also, yes, correct. But also you have to be the person you got to ask yourself, is she asking me that because I don't follow up or I don't live up to those things? Right. If, if, if somebody says, what time are you going to be there? And you go, I'm going to be there at five o'clock and you, you're not the type of person who's going to be there at five o'clock if you're consistently late or you're just even if you're a little consistently late hey i show up 5 15. Mm -hmm. well that means you're not a guy whose word that can be relied on so it has to work both ways you have to always right. be so that you can never have anyone question so that you can and go why are you questioning does, me again then when somebody does question you you have the right to say don't ever ask me the same question twice which is something that guys bitch about all the time if oh she just keeps nagging me she keeps nagging but she's nagging you because she doesn't believe you that has to be that has to be contained all right let's do the rest of this on the patreon my coffee just hit in so i'm i'm all I'm right running, beautiful i'm, I'm running patreon well. patreon.com slash man school 202 we're going to do the bonus coverage over there we do weekly episodes over there and uh we also do our listener mails over there so Go check us out, patreon.com slash manschool202 to support us. Also, if you want a relationship consultation, uh, I you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com or go to dantenero.com and click on consult if you want a relationship consultation with Dante. 
Um, quick shout out again one more time for the new Patreons. Brandon White, Connor Flores, Joshua Stargell, Michael, and Bilal Aslam. Shout out to y'all. Thank y'all for supporting us. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Um, I love y'all, man. Let's get into it. Check us on the other side on the Patreon side. Peace.